we ask him to continue to show his mercy on our leader, Prophet Muhammad, his household and companions and followers till the day of accountability. Today we are meeting with the third Khalifa after discussing said now Abakar in brief and said now Umar bin al Khattab in brief and today also Usman in brief. Usman bin Affan, son of Umayya, Abil Az, Abu Shams, and Qureshi is a wonderful personality. It's a wonderful personality. Allah so much love Usman bin Affan. So much so that he praises him in a number of verses of the Quran, especially. And Rasulullah Sallam so much, so much love Usman bin Affan. Dear to him much that he's the only one in this ummah. And nobody can have that opportunity again that married the two daughters of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a wonderful personality. The first of the daughter is Rukaya. May Allah have mercy on her. Whom give birth to Abdullah for him. And uh, the Sahaba started calling him Abu Abdullah because of the grandchild of Rasulullah Sallallahu from Rukaya. When she died, may Allah have mercy on her. Rasulullah Sallam married him, Umm Kulthum. In some narration, it was said that it's from the heaven that Allah commanded that Rasulullah Sallam should marry Umm Kulthum to Usman bin Affan. He's a wonderful personality. And he married her. But as Allah will wish, Umm Kulthum also died while Rasulullah Sallam was living. And her husband, Usman bin Affan, is still living. And uh, he became disturbed so much that the first daughter died. The second daughter died. The daughter of the most loved of Allah's servant, Prophet Muhammad. So he became disturbed so much that Rasulullah Sallam called him. Called him. And told him, this is what Allah has decreed for me and you. You must accept what Allah has decreed. Usman bin Affan, let you know this, that if I have another daughter, I will marry her to you. This is a wonderful statement by Rasulullah Sallallahu to Usman bin Affan. And he became calm. Usman is extremely rich. Very, very rich. Not for one man money, but real money of halal. And he has been given it out in Mecca. So much that the whole Meccans, including Kufar, they like and love Usman bin Affan. And if you are rich and you are given out, there is no doubt. People are going to subscribe to you. It is natural. It is natural. Unfortunately, some rich cannot even afford to give their close relatives, talk less of those who are far, talk less of those who are not even Muslims. <laughs> Usman bin Affan, after migration to Medina, there was a well. You can call it a borehole. You can call it any source of water. That is the biggest source of water for Medinians. And there used to be scarcity of water in Medina. It's owned by a Jew. And you know Jews always control the economy of anywhere they are. Whether you like it or not, today they are also the one controlling the economy of the world, the Jews. Very few of them. They determine what your era is going to be. For no reason. But enmity and oppressing humanity. Now, when Usman Afan noticed rather loud that the well belongs to the Jew and people actually are suffering of the amount he has placed for each of those who are fetching the water. Usman bin Afan bought, if you like, the borehole or the source of water. And do you know what he did after buying it? An expensive, highly expensive, without bargaining. He said everybody in Medina should drink out of the water free of charge. He has lived it works endowment. And the farm surrounding the well or the borehole, he said also feasible. And that for ducks. And uh, the ducks there, the devil there that is producing in the farm, is not like a company today. They will sell and give to those who are poor, sell and give to those who are poor. 
revolving the money into so many other businesses. Today, Usman bin Affan is having mansions of houses in Medina. Those houses, those big mansions that is facing the, the haram, where a number of pilgrims are being given to accommodate them during the Hajj. There is a big portion of that building that belongs to Usman bin Affan. Because the money continuously going around, turning around till date. And this is what today our billionaires and millionaires are not doing. They will die and leave the billions for crisis in their families. Nobody will even remember to pray for them. Because already they are in court, high court, appeal court. Because the money already there is, you, will never, you, will, you are not going to benefit anything from it. We're supposed to have endowment. And it's, I said an example in the Arabic version of National Mox. We should be proud of that building. That mosque is supposed to be a center of solving a number of the problems of the Ummah. Unfortunately not. We're supposed to have endowment of scholarship, endowment of those who are weak, endowment of those who are sick, endowment and you place people who are trustworthy. Those who have clean CV. If you cannot do that, what is the essence of having billionaires among you? It has no meaning. Usman bin Affan, for the past 1,400 years ago, he still have the endowment going, functioning. And the reward is being recorded in his account while he's still in his room. For all these years. Your, your words have no meaning. Does job become decoration? Proud. He has the billions. After all, you are not even moving, moving around with the billions. They are just paper scattered somewhere. I, I, I plead that our leaders should read about the Khulafa. You will underrate whom you are. And you know how far you are from the real practical teaching of Islam. Islam is not putting on to one or bin Riga or any other. It's implementation of the content. It's very sad. Where we have the resources and we cannot solve our problem with the resources. Usman bin Affan is having a lot of stands that you cannot deliver in a khutbah or one or two. Very generous. A Muslim who is rich is supposed to be extra generous. Even those who are poor are supposed to be generous, regardless of those who are rich. You know, during the Hudabiya, we heard about the Hudabiya in our secondary schools, Islamic studies, where the Muslims went to perform the lesser Hajj. And uh, somebody has to go and discuss with the Americans that we did not come for war, we just come to perform the lesser Hajj and go back. So Usman was selected because there is no house in Makkah that doesn't know Usman bin Affan. You must have benefited one thing or the other from him. So he was sent to Mecca because nobody can torture him, nobody can oppress him, everybody is willing to see him. And that is generosity for you. He entered Makkah with no sword, with nothing. People started coming together to re-announce Media personnel announced Usman is around. Since he has left, this family has noticed. Since he has left, these people have noticed. Everybody is discussing Usman bin Affan, even though they are kufar. So it took a long time that Rasulullah Sallallahu been expecting him to be back to inform him of the results and the discussion. Some companions started saying, maybe he has been killed. You know Americans, they can kill him. So the rumor of being killed became so pronounced that Rasulullah Sallallahu could not hold it. They gathered the companions. That give me bear. That if they kill Usman, even though we did not come for war, we are going to use our palms to fight them. And Allah is going to give us victory. They will not kill any of, the, of us and we go back. They give the bear, all of them. Including women who are there. You know, in Islam, women are not to go and fight. But they also give their allegiance. And Rasulullah Sallam said, this, is, this hand is on behalf of Usman. Because if Usman could have been here, he could have also given his allegiance. And Allah saw their iman. And he revealed a verse to confirm their forgiveness, all of them who are there. 
Be mindful of companions. Those who are abusing them, accusing them. In Nigeria, with all the sinning and the criminalities, in a country where trillions have been lost for no reason, in a state where uh, corruption has almost been normalized, in a state where people are dying of hunger, Muslim brothers cannot assist them, then you have the God to open your mouth and, and abuse the companions. Now, this is the true picture of whom they are. Allah forgive all of them. He said, We are forgiving all of them. Including Usman bin Affan who was absent. When the battle of Tabuk was on, a difficult war, very difficult. They were in object poverty. Tabuk is very far. Sony. Rasulullah Sallallahu announced straight that we are going to Tabuk without any strategy so that you know where you are going to. He sponsored the button of, of Tabuk. And Allah confirmed that in the Quran by the verses we have cited earlier. Brothers and sisters, we must love the companions. We must love the companions. They are true companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu and especially the four Khulafa Rashidun. And more especially for those who want to be leaders. Leaders that Allah is going to be happy with. Not leaders who are going to be brought before him in chain on the day of Qiyamah. Allahumma is al Islam wal Muslim. Wadamira Adana Adaka Ada Adin. Allahumma alayka bil kafara wal fasaka wal fajara al lavina kidna al Islam Kaida. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fil akhirat hasana. Wa kina adabanar. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد